Well, 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 it seems like PNSO just won't give our wallets a break. And they know just what animals to create a stir with. Today, we have not a dinosaur, but a prehistoric mammal. And not just any mammal, but a cetacean. And what I feel is a long overdue genus, the prehistoric sperm whale Leviathan. The discoverers originally chose the name Leviathan, which comes from the Bible and has come to mean anything massive and powerful. But it was already taken by a mastodon, so in a literary brainwave, they used the original Hebrew name Leviathan, which I dare say is a much cooler name and spelling. The species name Melvilleye of course honours Herman Melville, the author of Moby Dick, which you probably know is about a monstrous white sperm whale. Whales can be divided into two main groups, the Mr. Seti, the baleen whales, and the Odontoceti, the tooth whales. The largest tooth whales are the sperm whales, and Leviathan here belongs to that group. And while you might expect a prehistoric representative to be bigger, the average size estimate for Leviathan was actually smaller than the modern sperm whale, with an average mature male being about 60 meters or 52.5 feet. Leviathan has been estimated to be between 13 to 16 meters, and only the upper estimate of 16 meters makes their sizes comparable. Now this is Rekena, the Leviathan, and she's roughly 34 centimeters or 13.4 inches accounting for this curve. And despite the official stated 36.6 centimeters, I can't get anywhere near that. PNSO has stated they base this off a 16.5 meter or 54 foot adult, and their intended scale is 1 to 45. Now, using my own 34 centimeters and an adult length of about 14 meters, I get about a 1 to 40 scale. Interestingly, because of the square cube law, you can see how in this schematic, a modest 3 meter length difference can lead to a comparatively dramatic volumetric increase. Now, size aside, there's something else that makes Leviathan far more dangerous than the modern day sperm whale. And for that, we go to the head, which actually is quite fitting because let's be clear, for Leviathan, we only have a near 75% complete skull to go on. Now, anything post-cranially is speculative, even if well-informed. The modern sperm whale Physeter has teeth only in the lower jaw, with which it secures giant squids and then sucks them in. Leviathan also has upper teeth and a comparatively shorter and more robust rostrum, in this case, more comparable to the orca. And not just that, but the teeth are huge, as large as 36 centimeters or 14 inches, which is longer than this model itself. This prominent feature is very well sculpted, showing here the robust and the procumbent, meaning the forward projecting teeth. In the lower jaw, and here in the upper jaw. The paint application is adequate, covering each tooth well uh, with imperfections seen only up close. There's a yellowing in the gums near the root, which is nice, though as expected, they aren't as beautifully done as in the release images. In addition, the teeth of Leviathan actually fit together, as you see in this occlusional facet here, forming a very nice pocket for the opposing tooth. The jaw doesn't articulate, which would have given us the opportunity to see this in action. Now with teeth like these on both jaws, it's thought to have actively predated on other whales, and perhaps excitingly, even conflicted with the contemporaneous megalodon, with which it shared megapredator status. The eye position on sperm whales has always stood out to me, as if drawn by an artist in a state of inebriation, or a game of pin the tail on the donkey gone horribly wrong. So when the release images dropped, I was surprised how high the eyes looked. 
However, PNSO's skeletal shows the angulation of the skull in relation to the overlying soft tissue. Now, Zhao Chuang also wanted to reflect the drooping of flesh in the upper jaw that covers the teeth. Now, I hope the camera can focus here, but from the inside here, you can hopefully see how much is soft tissue. And if I were to project where I think this is, taken together, might account for the seemingly too high position of the eye. I do like how this droop is affected. And here again, it would have been nice to have an articulated jaw to show this amount of soft tissue more clearly. The tapering of the head from a narrow snout to the width at the back informed the reconstruction of the body. Continuing the thickness from the head and then tapering down as you can see here. Now at this point, as you no doubt have noticed, let's talk about the seams. Yes, there are seams. And not just one, but two. There's one here behind the head and another here, the lower jaw. And as you can see, the one in the head is very noticeable, cutting as it does across the smooth skin. And I'm sure you want to look at the seams compared to that of the Tylosaurus here. Now, having had this on my desk for a while, I'll share some thoughts on this at the end of the video, but I just wanted to show it to you first. Alright, as for the rest of the animal, we know next to nothing about it. Since Leviathan was a sperm whale, it makes sense to borrow from that. On the other hand, given its skull proportions and raptorial habits, it makes sense to borrow elements from the orca too and come up with a reasonable amalgam. The flippers and tail were based on the sperm whale. However, the shape and robustness of the flippers and the more acute angulation was used to support a more active hunting lifestyle, more similar to that of killer whales. The skin coloration was also modelled after the orca. And as such, the colour replication is simple, with few opportunities for complexity, except perhaps the transition areas here in the body and the edge highlights of the flippers. And on the underside, just the faintest hint of pink in the throat, the beginning of the flippers, and the anal region. If you've ever wondered why it's called a sperm whale, the skulls of sperm whales are unusually shaped, with the posterior part shaped like an amphitheatre. Now there are two oil sacs in the head of a sperm whale. The upper is called the spermaceti, containing very high quality oil, which solidifies in contact with air, turning white and looking like you know what. The lower sac contains denser oil and is called the junk. I am not kidding here. Now either the person who named these parts had a sense of humour, or the association between junk and semen came later. I don't know. Now maybe one of you etymologists can educate me below. The posterior part of the skull supports the posterior part of the spermaceti sac, while the maxilla forms a trowel that supports the junk. There's a suggestion that Leviathan may have used his bulbous head for ramming and stunning prey or rivals, and this isn't without precedent. 
The Moby Dick's sinking of the Pequod wasn't pulled from fantasy, but real-world instances. For example, the sinking of the Essex in 1821 and the Anne Alexander in 1851. The Essex's hull was white oak, very, very strong. Now, timbers with 30 cm square cross-sectional areas made up the ribs, which were covered by oak planks 10 cm thick, in turn covered with yellow pine more than 1 cm thick. Now, the sperm whale struck the Essex at about 6 knots and capsized it in 10 minutes. Now, imagine what that would do to a flesh and blood victim. The posture of the whale is curved to show the tail flexing strongly, giving Leviathan a powerful propulsive surge. So that's pretty much it for the model itself. Now let's compare Leviathan to the Basilosaurus. And just for fun, let's take out the 1 to 45 scale Mammon Seasaurus, just to give you an idea of how massive Leviathan was. So, some final thoughts. First, we have to talk about the seams. Now, having had this for a while on my desk, which means a viewing distance of about 50 centimeters or 20 inches, I'll say the seam in the head is still noticeable because of the smoothness of the whale and the uniformity of the dark color. While in the jaw, I personally have become conditioned to not noticing it as much, possibly because of the white. The question is, how much of a perfectionist are you? Now, if you are one, then it's likely that this presentation looks too patchwork to satisfy you. But I've also noticed something else. Now here on the left, it's a lot smoother than over here. And as for the jaw likewise, on here in the left, compared to the right. And that suggests to me that PNSO could perhaps improve its processes here because if these good areas were uniform, then the seams would barely be noticeable. Now, PNSO and Zhao Chuang take great pains and pride in designing their sculpts, and I believe that he, more than anyone else, would not want seams if it could have been avoided. But being unavoidable, perhaps refining the process would go a long way towards bringing these models closer to his original image. And finally, I'll say that hollow figures should save on the material and shipping costs, so hopefully that might allow for larger dinosaurs, like the sauropods in the 1 to 35 scale I know many collectors like myself want. And given the texture of dinosaurs, clever color schemes and process improvement, I think the seams could be very well hidden. And overall, this is one nice solid representation of Leviathan, which I'd given up hope on as each company came up with instead, you guessed it, another Megalodon. And for the general public, they probably couldn't care less about Leviathan, which looks like any modern day sperm whale. But for enthusiasts, this genus is probably something we've been waiting for for a long time. And given that the former group comprised a larger percentage, the fact that PNSO has taken a risk to give us more obscure animals is commendable and fortunate, uh, without which I think we would have no representations at all. And for me, finally having this, you know, with all the features that make it stand out, the, the massive bulk, the dentition, I'm personally grateful, and I think I will learn to live with the seams. Alright, so that concludes this video on the PNSO Leviathan. Uh, let me know what you think. If you're like me and you've hoped for someone to produce this Leviathan for a long time, I'm sure you'll have plenty to say. I look forward to reading your comments and I'll see you soon with another review.